Hey guys, it's Jacqueline over here at Homeschool Hangout XYZ. I am asked all the time as someone who helps others homeschool, how do I prepare my children to enter the world where tech is such a huge part? How do I teach that mindset and that thinking that approaches programming, math, science, all of that, especially if the parents don't come from a tech field? How do you teach a child who doesn't naturally just understand problem solving? Well, I may have found the solution for us all. Today I am reviewing Brilliance Premium Subscription. So if you like these kinds of reviews, high school kind of aimed, a little nerdy, a little techy, do me a favor, thumbs up, like, subscribe, all this stuff. First up, my disclosure. Yes, I was given a couple subscriptions to Brilliant, a couple of their premium subscriptions for free in order to review it as part of the homeschool review crew. That does not sway my opinion. It ha really has no effect in that way. But I'm just gonna start off with, I loved this. I absolutely loved this. But let's get into what it is. Okay, this is a set of online courses through their portal at brilliant.org and right now they have over 70 courses and they basically brought break down into math science and computer science but stop it's not just math science and computer science classes now of course they do have classes and things like crypto and multivariable calculus but before you tune out the math starts at pre-algebra, they have an everyday math course. And where I think this shines is the fact that they have classes, and they're short classes, not every class is a semester, in how to think in STEM. So you've got a logic class, which my 15-year-old loved. You have puzzle science, the joys of problem solving, scientific thinking. I'm, I'm looking at my list of some of these things. And just so much mathematics fundamentals, you know, I just, computer science fundamentals, it's all about how to think. And then they go on from there. I would say that this starts at about sixth grade, that at, at starting about sixth grade, you're going to start seeing uh, classes that pretty much any student can cover. Um, we loved it. So let's get to what the kids thought. I was doing this with my 17-year-old senior and my 15-year-old sophomore, who, just for some reference, are maybe not your normal kids. I understand that. Um, my 17-year-old is in his second semester of calculus, and my 15-year-old is in a pre-calculus class right now. Oh, and my uh, senior is also in his second semester of college physics. So I had them go in. Uh, they both liked the logic class. They both felt that they got tips and hints and just ways to like solidify an approach. So that was great. Um, Indra Jor specifically said he felt like as you worked through the courses, they had a nice ramp up of difficulty. So frequently in these STEM courses, my kids feel like they either start really hard and are super hard the whole way. So if this isn't something you already do, you're lost. Or they're really easy and they stay really easy the whole way. Uh, they both agreed that it had a nice ramp up. So you really ended at a different level than where you started. Um, Nerdpud, that's what I call my 15-year-old, um, really liked the approach and how they handled the programming classes. Now, my kids, I mean, and this isn't based on me. Their father is a software engineer and has been programming all his life. So, of course, my children program. She was very honest with the fact she didn't feel like she learned anything in the computer science fundamentals, but she's going to go on to take the other classes because that'll build out her language skills. She really liked their approach and how they handled programming and the breakdown of programming. And so I don't know that I have had her endorse a beginning programming class in a very long time. And when I say a long time, I think the last one she really liked, she was in second grade, third grade, maybe. All the rest of them are just, I'm gonna do the challenges. That's what I'm here for, is the challenges and the programs to write, not the teaching, if that makes sense. 
So I found that very impressive that she really liked it. Both of them absolutely loved the user interface. They thought it looked good. It worked well. It wasn't clunky. I, I, I was surprised because there are not a lot of them they absolutely love. They like Khan Academies, but when it comes to some of these, they're just like, eh, yawn. It's fine. I learned. I'll keep going. But they both really, really liked it. So I'm, I'm looking here. Um, they do a lot of question and explanation. So they'll ask you a question and you can put in the answer. And sometimes when they go from one question to the next question, they're going to teach you a new concept. So they'll give an explanation first. But if you go in and first question off, you have no idea. No, no, don't know. That's okay. They walk you through it. They don't just give you the answer. They actually show you the process, which for me is very, very important. And I frankly only see that in college class assisted websites like Chegg and things like that, where they really go through the steps. Now, as the parent though, because you're going, okay, so they can see all the answers. When you go through and want to review their work, it tells you whether or not you saw the answer before you answer the question. Like when I go back, it's like, oh, you got this right, but you saw the answer first. And so that is a nice little check as a parent, just to really see what their progress is. More of like, were you doing the lesson or did you understand the material kind of situation? Um, I'm, I'm looking at it. They've got a few different paths. Like I said, they have the math, the computer science, and the regular science. But even within that, in math, they go from pre-algebra to multivariable calculus and everything in between. Multivariable calculus is like third semester calculus, if I remember correctly. Uh, I just redid two semesters in college and we, yeah, we didn't get to that. Um, you also, though, deal a lot with number theory. They have statistics. They have a lot of number bases. If your kids want to get into competing in competition math, which is a thing, I, not shockingly to anybody watching this video at this point, at least, I was on the math team in junior high and high school. And there's a different thinking because those aren't based on necessarily just your math level. It's a way of thinking. They have mathematic fundamentals. I'm looking at right now complex numbers. That is a doozy for everybody. We covered it inside of other classes, but I, I may go back and rewatch that. Basis, which was one I felt I never really learned very much about. They even have a math history one, and I'm very interested in this. I'm a little bitter. I haven't had very much time to play with this myself other than for reviewing purposes. So um, over Christmas, I may be playing around with many of these classes. They have random variables and distributions. Leave it to say, every little weird thing you may want to know about math, they got something for it. I love it. They even, in computer science, get to crypto. It was great. Um, computer science, I'm going to click over just to look at the computer science. Um, it's a little bit more limited in some ways and not in others. They have fundamentals. They deal with algorithm fundamentals, which is very important. They look into Python, neural networks, search engines. They get into applied computer science, which is great. Um, they also, you know, tell you who's doing it. They are on a cycle, so they do retire some courses. So all, all courses may not be there all the time. And when I say that, I mean right now they're going to be retiring probability fundamentals, data structures, and differential equations too. So, you know. They also have so many interesting science classes. Of course, they start with the scientific thinking. They've got physics of the everyday, science essentials. I'm looking at right now chemical reaction, knowledge and uncertainty, classical mechanics, astrophysics, gravitational physics, electricity, magnetism, and quantum objects. So I, I think this is great. My husband had actually heard of it before I got the opportunity to review it. He'd seen it advertised somewhere and he was interested. So we as a family may be spending quite a bit of time in this over the next, I believe I have a year's worth already included. I highly recommend it. I think it's great. I think it's great even if you don't have a child who wants to go into STEM because it will introduce a new way of thinking. And frankly, I was discussing this with my sophomore yesterday. 
some of this logical thinking is what I apply in everything. When people work with me to plan a project or to tackle some organizational thing, and they're like, you just think about it differently than I do. I think about it in a process that's driven by logic. And so even if you're never going to touch a programming language, even if you have no interest in taking calculus and quantum objects is something you don't even want to know how to spell yet do think about, this still holds a lot of value. The computer science to me at least is something everyone should consider doing because if you run a bakery and you hire someone to do your website, you're going to want to be able to change that website. And understanding the logic that a website is developed in will help you. So if it's not clear, big fan. think everyone should check it out. Uh, you can also read and possibly watch. I may be the only one doing a video. Read some other reviews of people who don't come from a STEM background, who kind of look at this with a different lens and see what they think. It'll be linked down below to pop over to the Homeschool Review Crew's website. That said, thank you so much, Brilliant, for giving me this opportunity. I will talk to you all later. Bye.